Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode. Crazy Entitled Aunt and the Italian Restaurant. The Walmart Karen Brood Story. My dad puts religion on top of everything and it's getting annoying. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Crazy Entitled Aunt and the Italian Restaurant This happened almost 40 years ago. I'm posting it as a thanks for reading the other stories. This one is more funny and entitled rather than infuriating and entitled. My immediate family was, for the most part, perfectly normal and boring. We were not prone to outbursts and tantrums. It was very calm and quiet. Everyone got along and we were pretty happy with our boredom. I tell you that so you understand that I had absolutely no experience at all with people prone to screaming fits. You should also know that I suffer from a case of terminal morbid curiosity. I also don't give a shit. Never did. Never saw the fun in it. This happened when we were visiting for great auntie's funeral. I was 12. CA insisted that we all go out to dinner at her favorite Italian restaurant. It was just the best, she said so and she was never wrong. The gimmick here was a little flag of Italy on the table. When you wanted more dinner rolls, you raised the flag. This is important. Flag up, you get rolls. Flag down, no rolls. Remember that. The six of us are seated, they take our drink order and bring the bread basket. The cast has a new member, P.U. for my poor long-suffering uncle who will one day be made a saint for being married to C.A. for over 20 years. Some of you commented in my first post that he was an enabler. He wasn't. He was a victim as well. He couldn't leave her without leaving Emily. It started with the drink order. C.A., we will have five sweet teas. Dad, I'll have a Coke. Mom, I'll have a Coke. Me, tea, no sugar, this is a mortal sin in the South. C.A., don't be silly, you can't have sweet tea without sugar. Me, I don't like sugar. C.A., that's stupid. Bring her sweet tea. Waitress, winked at me yes, ma'am. P.U., I think I'd like a Coke as well. Emily, I'd like a Coke. C.A., we drink Pepsi, not Coke. We are having sweet tea. The waitress brought us our requested drinks. C.A. was growing agitated. C.A. likes to control everything and everyone. So she told us what to order for dinner. I'm not going to get into an ethical debate here, but I refuse to eat veal. She demanded we all have the veal. I refused. I knew this would set her off, but, oh well. I'm not eating veal. My parents, after I had explained to them years earlier why I would not eat veal, refused to eat it as well. Did I mention I get my I don't give a shit quality from my parents? Well they didn't give a shit either. They were perfectly capable of ordering whatever the hell they wanted. So they did. I had lasagna. It was good. My mother's was better. Once we ordered what we wanted, it emboldened P.U. and he stepped out of line and ordered something else as well. C.A. was not. Having. I.T. C.A., you are getting the veal. P.U. and O. I feel like something else tonight. C.A., the veal is the best. P.U., I still want something else. C.A., you won't like it. P.U., I'm sure I will. C.A., you don't know what you are talking about. P.U., I know what I like. C.A., well you can't have it. P.U., yes, I can. C.A., I said no. P.U., well, I'm ordering it. 
CA, you always get the veal. PU, because it's your favorite and you make me. I don't even like Italian food. CA, yes you do, it's your favorite. PU, I want the lasagna. CA, damn it, PU, order what I tell you to order. PU, no. Lasagna. Emily, I'll have the lasagna too. CA, you can't have that, you are allergic. Emily, no, I'm not. CA, I'm your mother, I know what you can and can't eat. CA, to the waitress bring her the veal. The whole time this is going on I am looking from one to the other like watching a tennis match. Back and forth, with the pitch of her voice getting more and more shrill with each sentence. I was fairly certain that when we left bats would have been summoned. I'm just watching them and eating a dinner roll. The food arrives and everyone got what they wanted, even Emily, much to the fury of CA. Then it happens. PU raises the flag. CA puts it down. PU puts it back up. CA takes it back down. Up and down, up and down. I see the bread guy hovering at the edge of the table, waiting. Flag goes up and he rushes in to drop off the new basket before it can go back down. CA grabs the basket and throws it at the kid that delivered it. To save time in typing, every time CA speaks, the flag goes down. The rest of the time it goes up. CA, you don't need any more bread. PU, but I want more. CA, I said no. PU, I'm an adult, I can have more bread if I want. CA, no you can't. PU, why, just tell me why I can't have more bread. CA, because I said so. You aren't listening to me. PU, I'm hungry and want more bread. CA, you wouldn't be if you had ordered the veal. PU, yes I would. I always am but you never let me have more bread. Tonight I get more. Me, I want some more bread too. CA, no, you have had enough. Me, no, I really think I want more. CA, well you are wrong. Me, you seem upset. CA, that's because you people aren't listening to me. Me, yes we are. We just don't care. We want more bread. Dad, to me while trying not to laugh at how absurd this is you aren't helping. Me, I think you want more bread too. At this point the whole place is watching our table and the battle over the flag. I'm fairly sure there were people taking bets to see who would win. In the middle of the confusion, a nice lady sitting at another table nearest Emily, tapped her and slipped their fresh bread basket to her. Emily took a roll and slipped it to me. I took one and slipped it to my father, then it went to my mother who, after taking a roll for herself slipped one onto PU's plate. CA saw it and grabbed for it. PU was faster. He shoved the whole thing into his mouth at once. It was a big roll. The waitress approached the table to check to see if we needed anything, Xanax was unfortunately not on the menu, and CA demanded she bring the check. Me, I want dessert. Chocolate cake. PU, sounds great. I'll have some. Emily, me too. Dad, I'll have apple pie. Mom, I'll have cheesecake. Bring cheesecake for CA. She loves cheesecake. CA, no. We are not having dessert. We are getting the check and leaving. Now. Dad, no, we aren't. CA, while I'm leaving. You can all walk home. Dad, I drove. It's our car. CA, I know, give me the keys. Dad. Nope. 
CA, you have to give me the
the keys. I live here. You are just visiting. Dad, yes, I'm just visiting. With my family. In our car. CA, it's my state. Dad, I don't care. It's my car and you can't have it. You're a terrible driver anyway. CA, no I'm not. Dad, you drive the wrong way on the freeway. CA, no I don't. It's the other cars going the wrong way. Dad, you get lost in your own neighborhood. CA, not always. Dad, you are not driving my car. CA, yes I am. Dad, no you aren't. That ladies and gentlemen, continued while we ate dessert, paid the check, my father was buying, as we walked to the car, and for the entire trip back to their house. My father drove. We dropped them off and went back to our hotel room. Dad, has your sister always been this crazy? Mom, no, it started when she was about three. Dad, what happened? Mom, she started speaking in complete sentences. Dad, ah. Dude. This is the funniest thing I have ever read. That's for sharing this story. Very difficult to try not laugh on a bus full of people, but the back and forth of the flag really got me. This is beautiful, especially your mom's response at the end. She started talking in complete sentences. Bring cheesecake for CA. She loves cheesecake by your mom is my favorite line. So funny. I had lasagna. It was good. My mother's was better. I love it, food always tastes better from your parents' plate. Damn mate that must have been rough, has she learned from this or is slash was she still entitled? The Walmart Karen Brood Story This happened maybe 15 years ago when I was little but it's still probably the biggest encounter I've had with a Karen Brood. When I was a little kid, Saturday was the day we do all our weekly shopping. Walmart took the longest to do and we were easily there two hours at most. It's honestly crazy how fast time can go in a place with little to no windows. A Walmart is not complete without a screaming, wailing child. Tantrums reign supreme there. On one such trip it was a packed summer day and in the middle of dealing with people being in their old worlds there was a cry. It started small but increasingly grew louder and louder. And it was a dreaded little kid scream so like you're bleeding loud. The Walmart wasn't a superstore so it wasn't that big and this screeching carried all throughout the store. I could hear it in the toy section and thought it was a kid having a meltdown there but even after leaving you could still hear it. One hour later, still screaming and crying loudly. Even now I have no clue how this kid didn't pass out. 1 hour 30 minutes we finally see a Karen brood. Karen is pushing the cart. The eardrum murderer is in the cart seat screaming. There's a little kid in the cart basket with a dead-eyed look on his face. A older girl maybe 13 or 14 walking slowly with the cart. Every time she let go Karen yelled at her to hold on. The same dead-eyed look. And then the dad. Looking the most defeated. I still remember this man even from when I was little. He looked disheveled. Defeated. Broken. He was the most dead. Karen had the hairdo, was wearing a lot of gold and was walking slower than a snail on purpose. A man told her to make her kid shut up and she said, and I still remember, if I have to listen to this all the time at home then all of you have too. This is what I deal with all the time. This is IT. I hope you all enjoy your shopping experience because we are not leaving. The manager eventually made an appearance and asked her, essentially, WTF is wrong with her. She told him she wasn't leaving until she was done. He told her that she was disturbing the other customers while walking beside her since she refused to stop the already slow speed she was at. She said, tough shit, and kept going. 
Then he threatened to call the cops. Karen didn't like that, so the manager asked to speak with her alone and then she walked off at a normal speed, no kids, with the manager and was kicked out of the store. The little kids stopped crying and the father took over and took all his kids out of the store. I think about this every once in a while. I just hope he got a divorce and got custody cause I still think that kid was crying because of her and not a tantrum. She was crazy and we shopped there as a family till 2015-16 and never saw her again. Now I just don't go to that one at all. The kid was wailing because of Karen. Also, yeah, ONG every time I go to Walmart there is a screaming baby slash toddler in a cart. Last time, the parents weren't even trying to soothe him, just pushing the cart and chatting. I was like the fuck? Soothe that baby, he is upsets. I used to work for Walmart, don't miss the screaming kids and so much more. If I'd wanted kids before working there, that would have eliminated any desire for them. My dad puts religion on top of everything and it's getting annoying. Hey, I understand that religion is really important to some, I'm not here to talk badly about religions but the way my dad behaves makes me dislike religions. I'm 19 now but my dad forced me to pray and follow my religion since I was 10, I prayed but stopped cause I realized I'm not doing it for myself, I'm just forcing myself to pray like a chore, just to make my dad shut up. Because of religion my dad has this annoying view of life where if your child doesn't pray or doesn't care about religion, you fail as a Muslim. I can't pass a single day without him saying that I'm an egoist or that I'm a failure cause I don't want to pray for my family and for God, no matter what I achieve in life he doesn't care and always brings the fact that I don't follow religion. A lot of time he used religion to yell at my mom or beat my brother, I always defend my mom because she's 49 and he shouldn't force her to do anything, it's her life, but every time I do that, he insults me and says that I'm an asshole, a failure, and if I followed religion, I would understand his value, that he should be the most important thing in my life after religion. I don't really like my dad, he's an asshole who makes us all suffer and play the victim afterwards and because of him, I started to dislike religions because I don't want to turn like him, I don't want to be an asshole with my kids, I don't want to be violent, I don't want to be totally mesmerized by religion to the point that I harm others. Sorry if what I said isn't clear, English isn't my first language, but I really need some advice, please I need a way to deal with his mentality, because I'm a really sensitive person and what he says to me really impacts me negatively on a daily basis. His religion is just an excuse to be a shitty person. Biggest issue with religion. It can be a great comfort to people, but it's also a perfect vehicle for injustification of being a bad person. If I'm correct he's not following what his religion says. Plus he just uses religion as an excuse because I don't think that any god talked about beating your wife or your child. My Muslim friends told me that it's written that you shouldn't force the religion or harm others because of the religion, but my dad just takes the part where it's written that's it's good to spread the religion so for him, he should force his children to practice IG. I'm sorry you're going through this OP a religion is a slippery slope thing. It could be enlightening and great, but it could also be misused and abused. Study up on your religion and use it against his flaws. Quote the religion on his flaws just to prove how mistreating you and your mother is being a hypocrite and a failure. Lead the life you want to live, hope you find peace. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.